Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast, members of the Off the Ball Network. And today we're going to be breaking down game one of the Western Conference Finals between the Dallas Mavericks and the Golden State Warriors. But before we get started with today's episode, if you guys are new to our YouTube channel or you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any other podcast streaming platform, make sure to download all of our episodes, share it with your friends, and continue to like, comment, and subscribe and turn on post notification on our YouTube page. Let's get started with today's video because we had a Western Conference matchup that you know, I feel like was a little bit more interesting. And obviously, you know, it wasn't the two teams that we ideally expected to match up here. Obviously, a lot of people had Phoenix, you know, moving on to the Western Conference for the entirety of the year, given, you know, they were fresh off an of NBA Finals appearance. And, you know, ultimately, they were able to double down on what they were able to accomplish last postseason in the regular season. You know, this was a team that featured a defensive player of the year finalist in Michael Bridges, Devin Booker and Chris Paul, two all-star reserves coached well by Monty Williams, who was obviously the coach of the year and, you know, a great supporting cast and, you know, a lot of guys who can, you know, just do a lot of stuff in terms of outside shooting and, you know, just being productive overall. Right. But unfortunately, Dallas was able to, you know, proceed to the Western Conference Finals, shockingly taking down the Phoenix Suns in that seven games series battle and, you know, ultimately putting a really big blemish on Chris Paul's career. But obviously in heading into tonight's matchup, you know, there was a number of things that I was going to look forward to in watching as far as you know just analyzing what Dallas was going to be able to accomplish in this series right I wanted to be able to analyze what defensive adjustments Jason Kidd to make in this series I think that is going to be a big staple in how well Dallas will perform in this series and could be one of the biggest reasons why they could possibly end up advancing to the NBA Finals for the first time since 2011. That being said, from an offensive perspective, I want to talk about what Dallas looked like in a half court setting. A lot of isolation basketball, as we all know, you know, Dallas one of those teams that, you know, run one of those heliocentric type offenses, right? And I think when you're going up against an opponent like the Golden State Warriors in a series where, you know, it's going to be high pace, a lot of transition opportunities. And when you're matching up against a team like Golden State, who has a number of point of attack options on the defensive end, guys like Andrew Wiggins, Draymond Green, and, you know, the list continues to go on. Not to mention what they can do as a team defensively as a unit. Your offense definitely is going to have to show up, right? And I think if you're the Dallas Mavericks, this potentially could be the peak of their heliocentric offense right obviously when you're going up against a team like golden state like i mentioned you know with them having so much depth point of attack defenders and you know just a lot of options on the defensive side of the basketball i think they're more than likely if you're the dallas mavericks you're gonna have to get everyone involved and make sure that you're forcing this golden state warriors defense to collapse right you don't want these guys to be stagnant you don't want people just ball watching one man isolate at the top of the key or over help and shade over on ball handlers and things of that nature just making your offense look a lot harder to you know really pr uh, produce anything and generate any positivity so i'm going to be curious as to what some things jason kidd is going to be able to do in order to you know negate and combat you know golden state's defense right but all in all, I mean, to start out the game, similar to the last series, Jalen Brunson, he got off to a slow start, start out the game three for 10. Luka Doncic was pretty efficient in the first half, I would say for the most part. Um, I kind of tuned in a little bit late, but you know, a guy like Jalen Brunson, a guy who typically likes to operate within the mid range, or even a short range in certain key moments, right? If he's unable to get himself all the way to the basket, due to his lack of, you know, athleticism and size in comparison to what Golden State has on the other side of the basketball, it's gonna take him a little bit extra time to really figure out what spots he can operate in in this series, how can he get a shot off in this series, and ultimately, how can he maximize his productivity in a half court setting? That's where Jason Kidd's gonna have to come into play, right? First and foremost, with Golden State, Steve Kerr just does a tremendous job in throwing multiple different coverages at you, right? And I think that's why Luka Doncic and the rest of these guys started to slow down. Obviously, we can bring in the fact that, you know, fatigue plays a role. You know, they're fresh off a of game seven win against Phoenix, you know, just a few nights before the start of this series. But when you're Luka Doncic and you're operating at the top of the key in pick and roll scenarios, and, you know, guys are trapping you, guys are sending late doubles, you're going up against, you know, 
box and one zone coverages it's really tough to figure out what you're going to be able to accomplish on the offensive side of the basketball and more importantly adjust to all of those defensive coverages that are being thrown at you because steve kerr is doing such a good job of keeping those coverages inconsistent that way you don't even have time to really adjust because once you make that that first initial adjustment you have to make a second and third and maybe even a fourth different adjustment on the offensive side of the basketball so i thought that played a key role in luka Doncic's poor shooting night same thing with jalen brunson dallas is one of those teams there's not a whole lot that goes on in terms of you know the off-ball fluidity of this offense right like i mentioned a lot of isolation implemented um guys like spencer dinwiddie i would like to see him you know take on a bigger role a lot of times you might not notice that he's in the game until maybe the second half and i think tonight you know he could have been a little bit more present on the offensive side of the basketball given you know jalen brunson struggling and you know luka Doncic just having a tough time really cracking this golden state warriors defense but you know all in all just to bring up some more points about dallas's half court offense right dallas given they weren't able to you know get any middle penetration or any deep downhill attacks they weren't able to you know create any open shots on the perimeter and given that's a staple within this offense it's going to be really tough for these guys to be able to produce and generate points in a half court setting if they're not able to do those certain things now when we're looking at golden state once again credit to their defense guys shading over guys making sure they're boxing out they're keeping them off the glass we understand dallas is one of the undersized teams from that perspective and golden state you know it's a turnover based defense right they were able to you know get out in transition get a few stops which really got themselves going right but all in all when you look at just a, from a pure matchup standpoint dallas given they weren't doing a whole lot of switching and i expect those things to change as the series goes on because i don't think that you know you can allow guys like jordan Poole to you know just comfortably get downhill attacks without pushing up on him a little bit earlier forcing him out turning him into a lateral penetrator rather than a downhill penetrator right but the minutes that i saw from andrew wiggins were absolutely phenomenal tonight you know in the first half he shot six of nine 15 points you know was very productive and he's one of those guys that typically thrives against other teams small ball lineups right and what golden state does Golden State tricks you into playing a small ball lineup when you really don't need to, right? Typically, we see teams go small because they want to fend the three-point line and have guys out there that are mobile enough to, you know, really limit Golden State's opportunity. And, you know, just being able to keep up with the dribble penetration, the outside shooting on closeouts, and, you know, just things of that nature, right? But generally, you know, Golden State has historically struggled against teams or, you know, shown some level of vulnerability against teams that actually play bigger lineups against their small ball lineups, right? If we go back to the first round in the Western Conference against, you know, the Denver Nuggets, in those moments where we saw the Denver Nuggets go to uh, Jokic and DeMarcus Cousins lineup, Golden State really struggled to, you know, keep those guys off the glass and, you know, just limiting them from an offensive perspective due to the sheer size and, you know, the ability of Jokic, obviously a guy who who's a back-to-back -back MVP, but you know, on top of the production that you were gonna get out of DeMarcus Cousins, who's also a capable passer, a guy who can do a little bit out of the mid post, can, you know, do things towards the top of the key as well, knocking down shots, scoring a lower block, and, you know, just do a little bit around the dunker spot, and, you know, just overall around the rim as well. And given Dallas doesn't really have anybody that can really punish them from that perspective, I mean, Maxi Klebe, he can stretch it out for you, but he's not the ideal go-to big in a mid post or short elbow and short corners right and neither is Dwight Powell more of a finisher in a half court setting if Luka Doncic and him can get involved in some Spain pick and roll expect him to be the recipient of a lot of lob catches but outside of that not gonna really hurt them from you know a one-on-one -on -one matchup in terms of scoring in the post right and maybe they probably don't even necessarily need to go about it from that standpoint maybe it's just you know sheerly throwing these guys on the offensive glass allowing them to you know dig up second chance opportunities and like I mentioned uh, earlier in the episode given Dallas wasn't really really able to you know accumulate a lot of open opportunities the best opportunities that you can get from outside are typically going to come off a second chance opportunity which is often offensive rebound right so maybe if they can implement something like that while being able to you know also within a half court setting run some more dummy action that can you know just refrain this golden state warriors defense from remaining stagnant there could be a lot of good things that happen within this series and i think the the momentum of this series probably will begin to swing towards dallas's favor right and as far as my pick, I do believe that Dallas will ultimately win this series in seven. Heading into last night's matchup, I expected them to, you know, go down and fall at Golden State. We understand, you know, these home games, the sheer apathy can sometimes even win the ball game over for you. Not saying that's what happened last night because obviously Golden State executed a great game plan, specifically on the defensive side of the basketball. And then offensively, they didn't have anybody on the other side of the floor that could really stop the dribble penetration. Like I mentioned, you know, maybe it has to do a little bit with fatigue, but I also do expect, like I mentioned earlier in the episode, 
episode i expect dallas to switch a little bit more as the series progresses i expect them to you know get a little bit more creative in terms of you know how they're going to be able to combat you know this golden state warriors defense right need a big series out of spencer dinwiddie and luka Doncic obviously cannot do it on his own i could believe jalen brunson will eventually come along but spencer dinwiddie he might be the x factor in this series right last series it was it felt like it was reggie bullock and dorian finney smith with their defensive prowess on devin booker and chris paul and you know the rest of the wings and perimeter guys against the phoenix suns right but in this series i do believe that guys like spencer dinwiddie who can get their own shot in the half court setting be able to take advantage of golden state switching in certain occasions on big on guard instances where he can be himself get to the rim score around the mid-range or short range areas and knock down maybe a couple of open opportunities in the open corners spotted up on throwback options and things of that nature right in the three guard lineup that you know dallas likes to run but you know with that being said just want to give some credit to kevon looney he was phenomenal tonight a guy who typically you know does a really good job in starting these games for golden state and i don't know if a lot of people notice this is otto porter jr otto porter jr is a guy who just does a lot on both sides of the basketball right being able to you know score at the end of the shot clock shooting over the top of smaller defenders because like i mentioned a lot of teams they look at golden state small ball lineup and they would like to go small as well but otto porter jr being able to just shoot over the top of the opposing wings in the opposing small ball lineups and he's able to have a lot of success right and defensively i don't know if he gets the credit that he really deserves because you know he's been doing a phenomenal job of just helping trap guys like luka Doncic, sending over late help over shading and things of that nature in a half court setting from a defensive perspective so all in all definitely want to give some credit to you know Otto porter jr tonight he was phenomenal and you know he was one of the reasons why you know alongside guys like andrew wiggins and draymond green defensively in the first half two-thirds of dallas's field goal attempts were from beyond the arc right and like i mentioned that's a staple of their offense but you know when it's it's due to the lack of penetration and guys are even getting blocked on some of those shots it's going to be really tough for them to keep their heads above water within this series right and i want to mention you know just before i close out the episode got to talk about the luka Doncic second half performance only 2.6 turnovers four of them came in the third quarter you know golden state they were able to you know do a lot of things in the third quarter specifically they did a great job in terms of you know just executing their game plan came out and started the third on the 10-0 run they're one of the better third quarter teams and have been for really better half of the last decade i would say right but if you're dallas dallas has to stay composed and you know they've got to come out with the second punch to start out these halves uh specifically in the third quarter right but you know all in all i do believe that as the series progress as dallas continues to fine tune their defense and things of that nature i expect golden state shooting to catch up to them right stephen curry wasn't that great tonight shooting the basketball missed some free throws here and there and that's an area where both sides have to clean up but you know you're seeing a lot of 41 percent nights out of stephen curry and then clay thompson he hasn't been able to you know regain his original form and that's not something that most people should really expect given injuries that he's coming back from you know it's going to take him a little bit of time to you know get accustomed to things and i think he is accustomed to those things but defensively he's obviously regressed and then offensively you know he's still in a way is finding his way back into this uh golden state offense where there's a lot more options than there originally were when you know he was a member of the team which sounds crazy because you know he was a part of one of the greatest teams in nba history from a record standpoint so that's that but i do expect golden state's you know poor shooting and inconsistent shooting specifically outside i expect that to catch up to them and you know if dallas is able to punish them from outside they can do a better job defensively switching keeping the rebounding battle close and then limiting their turnovers because golden state did a great job limiting turnovers tonight typically you know they're one of the worst teams in the nba from that dynamic so dallas wasn't able to you know ignite any transition offense due to those turnovers or things of that nature anyway but you know all in all i do believe that dallas will win this series in seven ultimately if you know golden state comes out of the western conference finals and you know makes it back to the nba finals i definitely won't be surprised you know this is one of the better teams in the entire nba that's why they made it to this point but all in all i have faith in luka Doncic. gonna be keeping an eye out on you know what dallas can do to improve their half court offense but hey you guys let me know what y'all think about this here in the comment section thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode with me here on the ball fake podcast if you're new to our youtube channel or you're listening to apple Podcasts or spotify or any other podcast streaming platform make sure to give us a five star rating like comment and subscribe turn on post notification and give us a nice review on all podcast streaming platforms but besides that it's your boy nice and chunky benny you're listening to the ball fake podcast and we out praise god